All right, Alan, what do you think? Let's get started. I think so. They're still coming right. in, but we're just, we can just start with the basic introductions. Yeah. All right, so welcome everyone. Hi, I'm uh, Stephen Nikwiseng. I'm the executive director and president of the Monroe Institute. And I have with me, Alan Evans, who's a trainer and our chief program officer, as well as Dr. Brian Daly, who's also a trainer of the energy medicine course. So we'll, we'll uh, guide you today on our fun journey today to talk about reopening, as well as introducing the energy medicine course, which will be the first course on August 7th. So um, we've been working very hard behind the scenes to make sure we're ready for you. And I wanna assure everyone that we've done everything we can to make sure it's safe. And we're following the CDC as well as the Commonwealth of Virginia guidelines. And so we're looking forward to having everyone come to the residential courses, whether you're vaccinated or not. But please note that according to the current rules, if you are fully vaccinated, you are allowed to not wear a mask. Otherwise you will be required to wear a mask. Now behind the scenes, we've been doing a lot of improvements to our facilities and our processes to welcome you back. And I just wanted to review a couple of them with you to make you familiar about what we're doing. So first of all, we've implemented a device called a bipolar ionization uh, device, which helps to clean the air. So what it does is it neutralizes any viruses in the air, uh, including COVID. And we're going to install this in all of our buildings throughout the campus to make it safe for everyone uh, on our facilities there. So that'll help to clean the air for you. Um, next, we're putting in dividers, plexiglass dividers, uh, in places like the bookstore and the registration office to help separate uh, between the staff and the participants to make it safe for everyone. And we're also putting sanitization stations at all of the entrances. So you'll be able to use those to keep your hands and so on clean. Um, we're also spending quite a bit of funds on getting new furniture to help space out for the dining area as well as the meeting area, as well as just refurbishing some of our furniture to make everything fresh and new for you coming back. Uh, we'll have no touch digital thermometers. So when you come to the facility, uh, we'll do a temperature check to make sure everyone has a safe temperature and then you'll be able to come into the facility. So also um, we're spacing out the seating and dining areas per the guidelines, again, to, to bring proper social distancing. And all of the high touch areas, we'll make sure that those are clean daily, again, to keep it safe for you. And finally, uh, for those that are used to sharing a room, our policy going in is that we will not assign a guest to share rooms. Only if you request it will we have sharing to make sure that, again, there's proper spacing. So those are some of the things that we're doing. If you'd like to see the full details, go to our website. You will see there's a code page there, and we list everything in finite detail to help you understand what we're doing uh, to prepare for folks coming in. And uh, Brian, any any uh, comments? Well, first, I really applaud uh, everyone at the Monroe Institute for making a very safe environment. Um, the ionization itself can detect the COVID virus as well as illuminate it. So uh, it's a wonderful way of distributing very safe environment um, so if we can all do our uh, participation as both uh, in teaching and learning there in a very safe manner and I actually was principal investigator or co-principal investigator in three different COVID studies um, and so Stephen and I have been in communication throughout and They've put in a lot of thought in uh, upfront in how best to manage this and a lot of different options were considered. What's really nice about this is it's a very non-invasive, comfortable, safe environment. Um, so, uh, you know, hand washing, all that other stuff still in vogue, but uh, we can breathe safely. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. All right, so on to our second part of our conversation. Uh, we wanted to talk a little bit more about the energy medicine course. Of course, the two folks here are the trainers for that course. And let me say also personally, I've taken that course in 2019 and, and just really loved it. So I'd like to turn it over to the two of you, if you could talk a little bit more about what you would experience taking the energy medicine course. 
Sure. Alan, would you like to start? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so uh, with this course, we bring in energy healing and our primary modality is Reiki. So Brian and I have used Reiki for many years and that's the one we teach, but we also introduce other uh, modalities as well. And we bring crystals and Brian, you probably need to tell us about that. It's a big van that he loads and it takes us all day to set up <laughs> for the workshop. So uh, tell us what's in the van, Brian. Lots of crystals, uh, big ones, small ones. And uh, by the way, on campus, two biggest crystals in the world are uh, permanently residing there, which are my favorites. You'll see a video a uh, little bit uh, showing the immense, to some people they're just rocks and that's fine. I'm cool with that. But for those of us who really appreciate that they're energy tools and quite powerful and we guys have always been saying size doesn't matter. It's really true with crystals. Um, <laughs> some of the smallest ones are the most powerful and you'll have all kinds of um, opportunities to experience them and do crystal layouts and use them. Uh, we have someone that comes in to do a crystal grid for us each session. She always comes up with beautiful, unique uh, set up since since we have a lot of crystals you can go to town and put up something pretty elaborate. Um, we also, hey, we're the Monroe Institute where sound is really important. So um, there are a lot of well-guided exercises. Some of these will be playing while we're doing healing work with one another because uh, what's really unique is um, Bob Holbrook has taken this to a whole new level um, beyond this original binaural beats and spatial angle modulation. It's a whole different, really impressive. Uh, I got to test them actually in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber for a number of months. Um, and you think it's great at room air, boy, it's, it's a hippy dippy trippy uh, experience. <laughs> But even at room temperature and room air, it is as well. And so these give us some of the tools so we can expand our consciousness, not just for healing, but for others and out-of-body experiences and such on a moment's notice. They're like training wheels. They teach you how to ride, and then you don't need the training wheels. Although I'm always playing um, some variation of one of these, um, whenever I do healing work, because I also get the benefit of it as well. Which so we also, oh, yeah. go ahead, Brian. Um, I was, was going to say we also have biofield image uh, work, uh, the viewer that we use, and that is what we were. What Brian and I talk about a lot is that when you are given these concepts, you're like, I believe this. Okay, I believe this. I believe mm -hmm. intention is powerful. I believe energy can flow through you know me as a vehicle and I can be helping other people but with this biofield imaging we actually can see it and so we tend to step into I believe from I believe to I know this is really happening and there's something significant going on so that's one of the that's one of my favorite things about adding the biofield imaging to what we do um, yeah, because and you actually you know that's one oh, sorry Go ahead. I was just going to say, actually, it was one of the reasons why I took the course, because as an engineer, I like to see proof. And so, you know, you can see the difference from when you first take the course, what your energy looks like uh, on the screen. And then as we learn to increase our energy and direct our energy towards healing, you see how the images change over that week. And that's really powerful to me because now I know it. Now I can see a physical proof that this does work. So I love that Brian and, and you, Alan, bring this technology to us because it really helps to prove it. So yeah, that's one of the features I love in this course. And you get lots of video and lots of photographs. We are constantly care taking that equipment around and snapping <laughs> uh, snapshots of you. So you'll get your own uh, personal uh, little collection. On top of which you also get all the PowerPoints so you don't have to take notes. Uh, which are pretty extensive and cover a wide range of things. We'll talk about uh, not only crystals, but animal reiki and other kinds of specific. Uh, what are some ways you could work with someone with cancer in which 
uh, my personal experience has been you can do amazing things. Mm -hmm. uh, chemotherapy with nausea, vomiting, gone. You just work on the third chakra. You can improve blood counts. They have severe anemias. And um, I actually have used it in trauma patients. I, uh, at the University of Rochester, I teach advanced trauma life support. And we had a young 17 year old who literally let out her blood supply. We aggressively transfused her and she got admitted. And the chairman asked me to see her actually three days later because she had a compression fracture and was unable to get out of bed due to pain. And these energy therapies, not just Reiki, Tai Chi, Qigong uh, are very helpful with pain. And, not only was she able to get out of bed right away, but one of the advantages I have is I have PET scans, blood work, all kinds of things to document. And her blood count uh, went from 24%, actually went down to 14% in emergency when we transfused her. But it was at 24%, went up to 37% in uh, three days, which is an enormous, that's the equivalent of three or four units of blood transfusion which costs a lot of money. Yeah, oh, well, and the risk of HIV and other things, uh, even though they do screen fracture healing in half the time, um, there's all kinds of, and some things that have, uh, I've seen occur that you just wouldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. And you just are open to the possibilities of wellness and don't put limitations on yourself. because You don't know where it's gonna go, just be expansive. And it's very experiential. So you'll have um, meditations in the day, like a typical Monroe program. And then we'll be doing Reiki uh, with each other. And so you'll get a lot of practice in. You'll walk away with a master Reiki certification. And we have two Reiki shares where we invite in staff to um, treat them. <laughs> so you get practice with real people besides who's taking the program with you. So it's just very experiential. We do stuff with dowsing rods and pendulums, we, we cover a lot. And you just get to, again, experience um, all of it, which takes you from believing to knowing. Yeah, we have some fun. I hide some crystals. And if you find them and you've got to use the dowsing rods, uh, they're yours. So, and so far, every time we've had all of them found by the end of the program. And I hide them in some vicious places. <laughs> So, Alan, I was just looking at the questions, and someone just asked uh, if you're if you're going to teach Reiki, which uh, Alan just talked about. Yes, we do. Yeah. Um, and they're wondering if I'm already a Reiki master, should I take this course? Yes, absolutely. We have people repeat who've taken this course more than once, and we also will be happy to help with the master Reiki tra teacher training if they're interested in something like that. Um, again, we've had people take it just to retake it. And what we love about our attunements, and those of you who are Reiki folks understand what we're talking about, it's where we have the transference of this energy. Uh, we will have every Reiki master there join in on the attunements. And it's just a powerful experience yeah. to, to have yeah. that happening from more than one person. Uh, Alan and I, at one point uh, in the Rochester area, we had 40 people and 10 Reiki masters and each person got 10 attunements, one from each Reiki master as you went Reiki one attunement, Reiki two. And what's interesting when you do that, you begin to feel the differences in energy of different people. It's a wonderful experience. You only need one person to do yeah. it once, but, but it's a nice um, benefit. And those that are Reiki masters often participate in the helping. So we all get multiple attunements. Right, and I was gonna say that too, if you're a Reiki master practitioner, uh, you can also help us as we're uh, showing others how to do it in the um, breakout sessions. And uh, we have a number of people who already are Reiki master come specifically just to kind of enjoy, there's a lot that happens. For instance, uh, Dr. Melinda Connor published a study about a year ago using 10 different machines, you know, the QX, uh, QCX and others to quantify healing energies. And there's profiles, a Reiki, someone that does just Reiki has one specific mm -hmm. profile. And 
Tai Chi and Qigong have different profiles. And then there's something called a full spectrum healer, um, which is basically does all of them use different frequency ranges and such that others won't. And uh, in my case, I actually, even though I was positive in all the Reiki tests, uh, I tested out a full spectrum, which Alan Wood and anyone that takes this course generally, because we do a lot of differing techniques, which add a, a much wider range, um, particularly with the exercises, the sound exercises, they really Mm -hmm. uh, I've always enjoyed them immensely, and I've listened to all of them multiple times, and I still get a different experience uh, each and every time. Well, and I think the other thing that might be helpful as a Reiki master is you could come and actually see the difference you make. Because I remember when you were training us, Brian, um, you know, you had an image of the individual, let's say myself, and then you came along and did the, the Reiki healing, and you could see on the screen, the, how the image changed and how the energy that I was emanating was changing. So I would, I believe as a Reiki quickly. master, that would be really cool to see how that changed, right? And how you actually make an effect. Right. Yeah. We have a video um, we'll show in a little bit that shows Yeah, that. we'll talk about a reball, resonant energy balloon. You literally in one second will go from five miles an hour to a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> and you can see it as it's happening. It's really amazing. Um, so uh, it's not the be all and end all to everything, but it's a really useful tool. And I think the feedback you get, you know, you can literally hold your hands up and project energy and see the changes occurring in your hand and finger shock. Um, we'll show a couple examples of that. And it's useful for, if you ever go to energy sites like the Sedona Vortexes, you can see the energies as they occur. And you can, I have a Reiki master friend of mine. Actually, we're, we're gonna show that video. Oh, we are, okay, yeah. great. I'll, <laughs> I'll let them, uh, but she sends healing. We're sitting at Cathedral of Holy Cross, one vortex behind us is Bell Rock. And she's sending healing energy to Bell Rock, which is already, it's a vortex, an energy board, super <laughs> elevated. I'll let you see if you notice a difference. Yeah, are you ready for the PowerPoint? Oh, let's go. Yeah, let's do okay. it. Now let me start it. Okay. So Brian, we'll start with the reball so we can okay. give everybody an explanation of what that is and then we'll show before and after sure. pictures. Of that is something I learned at the Monroe Institute many years ago. It was only called re then the ball part hadn't come just joking um, <laughs> but it's the idea you inhale exhale and blow up a balloon of energy around you out the top of the head and back into the feet and this has a number of uh we can go to the next slide of, of different effects um you can set the intention to keep in everything good and positive let out anything negative. And then uh, if I'm working with a difficult patient in say the emergency department and they're an antisocial personality disorder, I put up my first free ball to keep his stuff out from me. And then pop a second one around the two of us with the idea that it'll help develop before. And they're always amazed, particularly security, how these really angry individuals will calm down in a bit. Now, this is Larry, who we asked to pop a reball. First of all, if you look to explain some of these, gold and white are very high frequency of vibration. Normally, the heart chakra is about, oh, an inch and a half, two inches diameter. This gold and white is his entire upper chest. And right below it, you see the third chakra is solar plexus extremely high energy, extremely enlarged. But wait, could it get better? Take a look at his hands. You can see in his right hand, which is on the left side of the screen, some gold and the fingertips. You see on his left green and some pink. Um, 
but he's going to now inhale, exhale, and it, I put five seconds, but it's really happened in about a second. Look at his entire chest is gold white. And what happens when you get really elevated energy levels, instead of seeing individual chakras, you see coalescence. It becomes one entire energy field. Look at the size of the brow chakra. Um, normally, this is comparing before and after. First of all, on the left side, he's really high energy to begin with. But with his reball, look at his hands. Do you see all the gold and green and, and all the way up the fingers? Um, and it's radiating down the arms, as you can see. And in the pants, if you look on the left, it's because this image is in reflect, it, the biophotons that are absorbed and reflected, dark clothes absorb. Uh, so you don't see much happening with this blue jean, but you do at the shirt, which is why we usually have participants go and get some uh, white scrub suits, you know, that are close fitting, not tight, but uh, so there's not a lot of loose or wrinkles in it. Uh, but on the right side, with, even with the dark color, you see that gold and white bleeding through. That just tells you how much he's elevated his energy levels. Next slide. And here's before and after. You can see them on the left. These are all high energy people on a good day. Now, the third person, you see a little dark under the chin. That's actually shadow, um, but with bright ring around it. Uh, lighting's really critical with this um, in an ideal situation. And we do set up a special area to image people with where the lighting's correct, but we do a lot on the fly. Um, this is showing, if you see the, on the left-hand picture, the third person to the right is 91 years young. And look at his energy field, his heart chakra. Look at the brow and his crown, it's enormous. The person to his left is a musician, actually a, a rock star. And he, he manifests, he's a very beautiful, wonderful person, donates to a lot of charities. And you look at the size of his heart chakra. Uh, I had asked him to turn around because I was so impressed with, uh, you know, a lot of people have bigger heart chakras in the front. He was really balanced. But look at him in the reball, the entire shirt, same thing, coalescence on all four people. So they're really elevating energies. Uh, now, this is one of my favorites. Um, Alan fell and jammed her thumb. Wait a minute, Brian, I get to tell the story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so actually I was setting up for an energy medicine course, moving those big heavy banquet tables we had in Nancy, uh, David Francis Hall at Nancy Penn Center. And I injured my hand so severely that I couldn't uh, like grasp a toothbrush, a fork. Uh, it was, in, I was having pain and it, it started swelling and bruising. I show and it to Brian. Let me just add, she okay. had a, a total tear of the ulnar collateral ligament on the side of her thumb. That needs surgery and then six weeks of casting. But I didn't tell her that. I just said, wow, you got a bad swollen thumb. And you know, Fred Rival, a great energy healer. So yeah, go so, ahead, Alan. So Fred was there and he's a former board member and he's also a residential trainer. He was there visiting just uh, the for the day, he had never been imaged. So he wanted to be imaged and he has his shirt off simply because you do get a better view uh, if you're not wearing white, you know, to be uh, without a, a shirt. So that's why he's uh, dressed that way. But you can just see he's already off the charts with the sizes of his uh, energy centers. So they're, Brian's um, filming him, photographing him. And I all of a sudden go, wait a minute. I know Fred is a tremendous healer. I've benefited from his healing efforts before. At the time, it was, um, which one was it, Brian? Healing Touch, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, he's a healing yeah. touch yeah. practitioner. He's also a Reiki master. He is yeah. now. He added that later. But at this point, he was healing touch, and I thought, okay, we've got biofield imaging. I have an injured hand. Work on me, Fred. 
<laughs> so I think it took about five minutes, uh, you know, for us to, uh, to go through this session here. Point out the blue around your thumb, if you can with a pointer. That is localized healing energy. First, look at how huge he's lit up his entire front. You don't see, this is coalescence. Look at his crown and brow chakra. They're enormous. Um, you know, throat chakra. He's just lit head to toe. Um, and he's applying healing energy there. And literally in about 36 hours, it was taught, it was here. And it was sometime after that that I mentioned Alan, by the six way. Weeks, six weeks later, but I'll tell you this. Oh yeah. We went to dinner soon after this, that we were heading into Nellie's Ford for dinner. And by the time I ordered my dinner and, and received it, I was able to, again, use my um, forefinger and thumb together and hold a fork. <laughs> And then the pain was subsiding, and by the next morning, it was like it never happened. Mm -hmm. So we so, we love those kind of stories, and we love to catch catch. Yeah, them. Yeah, and even look at the back wall; how bright that is. That's from yeah. Fred's yeah. back energy from his heart chakra, the back of his third eye, all those areas just lighting up the room. Yeah. Hmm. So let's move on to your story about okay. laryngitis. So, um, this is your oh, guy. On one second, Stephen. Did you have a question? No, no, no. I was just uh, nodding in agreement. This okay. is, uh, I know Fred very well too, and he's a he's a very good healer. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm in uh, Harry. I'm working at Harry's clinic in London. Harry who? Uh, Harry, o, Dr. Harry Oldfield. He was actually the original okay. inventor of this biofield imaging. It was called a different name at that time, but uh, Thornton, Dr. Thornton Streeter and I started collaborating very early and I was working in his clinic and a lot of them are people from parliament, it's, it's some very nice people, but I developed strep throat, I had 103 fever, you can see the red congestion, um, which you'll all see with infection, you'll see the throat chakra is blue, it was red, but if you look, there's a tip of this crystal wand. I don't know if they can see that. I'm holding it in front of my computer. Oh, uh, yes. Does it show up at all? It does. It's showing up okay. really well. So uh, out of frustration. And so I, the actual video you're about to see was a 70 seconds, one minute, 10 seconds long. Take a look and see what you think. you'll see some bright yellow in the back of my head. That's passing through my throat chakra where you see it gold and blue, blue's a normal color as I'm using it. And you can see actually there's bright energy going up the crystals as well. Okay. And then we have the so, before and after. And on the left is a before. Literally in 30 minutes, my 103 fever was normal. My sore throat was gone. I had what they call exudate or pus on the tonsils was gone. And notice around my head how bright the energy is. You can actually see uh, patterns really kind of screw up visualizing, but despite the check uh, pattern on my shirt, you see gold coming through. Um, and that was one minute to 10 seconds of therapy. So if I hold this crystal up, if you take your hands and rub them together for just a moment, here's the interesting thing. Whether you can feel it at home or wherever you are, that stimulates the hand chakras. Now, I'm just going to project energy and see if you feel a little tingling in the palm of your hand. For those of us that do, which I can actually feel it coming from the screen on my computer, um, you begin to realize time and space doesn't matter. One of the mm -hmm. things we do is talk about when you're treating a problem, 
think about going to back when it started. You know, they may have very advanced cancer. Why don't you think about going to the very first day that something happened? You can do that. Time and space don't matter. Why not? And for me, it's really, I get much better outcomes. So next one. Oh, this is my favorite. This is Marianne Dominic. She, uh, go ahead and click on it. She's about to send Reiki energy. She's on one vortex. Behind us is Bell Rock, already gold and white. How could you elevate that and how long would that take? That's just amazing. And you see, she has a black t-shirt on, all this gold from her heart chakra coming through. And this is one of my all-time favorite uh, images that I've recorded and we've had a lot. But this entire valley is huge with great, the vortex energies in Sedona are pretty amazing. And she elevates it literally in a matter of seconds to a much higher level. We are so much more than our physical body. And this is one great example. And we've got tons of others, um, which is really kind of fun. Oh, here's my favorite. <laughs> this is the world's biggest crystal. And that was Stephen uh, right Inkusane there. that was on, there he is. With the bag, uh, right? With the bag. <laughs> and what they're doing is sending energy. We're actually sending it to a person who's getting some surgery. Um, and you'll see him, oh, so you'll see it start to glow white as it bang. Yeah. And Steve, do you recall how that felt to you? Yeah, you know, it was amazing because I think this was a few days after we took the energy uh, e equals MC squared course. And we're all putting that energy into the crystal to help magnify it. And you could just feel the energy building up from everyone with that same common intent. And there's a part of the video, I guess, um, later on, you'll see where the energy just shoots out of the crystal and up into the sky. And that's where the screen goes blank. And it was amazing to see the amount of power that we could generate and the crystal amplifying it. Um, so it that is. was amazing white, proof to see. The whole area yeah. whites out. Exactly. Yeah. And no, that was very, very cool. A huge energy rush. Uh, I'm on the opposite side uh, from Steven. So. Wonderful. There you well, have thank it. Thank you. Okay. So there's some great questions coming up as well. Okay. Uh, looks like our energy medicine course is already filled up. So, oh, hey guys, great job. <laughs> Just sharing the information. Looks like it's filled up already. I so for wait. those that are interested, please know we do have a waiting list. So if you'd like to, you can send an email to uh, registration at monroeinstitute.org. So that's registration, I-O-N at the end. Um, and that'll go to our registrar and she'll maintain a list. And if an opening pops up, we'll reach out to you and, and you'll be able to sign up as well. And but we'll it looks be like having the course a, is signed ready. Michael yeah. has a question. He's, he's in the, he used to work at Spiral Circle. Actually, I did some talks down in that area. So it's very likely we have met. And I want to say this about the course. We will be offering it again in early spring. So we'll, we'll have it uh, if you can't make this one. Uh, let's see what else we had. Uh, Dr. Dunseat's Copper Wall Project related to the work you're highlighting in your course. Uh, yeah. yeah, so the principle that Dr. Dunseat is working on is really trying to measure the intent and in sending energy out and actually measuring a, a voltage difference. So the principle is still the same because if you look at all of our courses, what we're really learning to do is expanding our awareness and also looking at how with our intent, we can affect things, not only ourselves, but inanimate objects like a copper wall. So, you know, I've, I've recently had a long conversation with Ross and it is amazing the results that he's finding because he has results that show with the intent of sending energy to that wall, he sees a voltage difference. So there's proof that we're actually affecting uh, an inanimate object which is exactly what Brian is showing as well with his, his uh, camera software that he has. So yes, yeah. it's very similar. Uh, and to, to we, do, we actually do have biofield imaging in the copper wall room. Now. Right. We were actually about <laughs> to start the study when COVID happened and we, uh, so getting back, we'll, we'll be get, it'll be really an incredible combination of the two. Mm -hmm. uh, for those that haven't experienced a copper wall yet, it is a marvelous 
way of energizing, um, which the old monks used to do. They're highly polished, so they're, it's kind of mirror-like. And um, they can do all different kinds of monitoring as well as the imaging. So it's work to be done yet, but will be happening. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, someone asked about the reopening in terms of the ionizers that we're installing. Does it cause ozone? Um, yeah, so we specifically looked at that and talked to the manufacturers and it does not cause ozone. Uh, so that it is a safe device to use. It's also been used in several government buildings. Uh, we looked at recommendation letters from multiple sources to make sure that it was safe to use. And so it's been verified by the government as well. And so, yeah, so it's, it's safe to use and you know, we'll, be, we'll have it in all of our buildings to make sure it's safe for everyone. And there's a question here about maximum number of participants, Stephen, do you see that one? How many? Yeah, so uh, as we mentioned, our first going pass is that there's, we're not going to assign someone to shared rooms, but if uh, multiple folks come and they, they know each other, like I often travel to Monroe too with my wife and I, it, we can share a room together. So starting off, uh, we're at the Roberts Mountain Retreat Building and single rooms, just having one person in each room is about 11 people. Uh, but we know there's a couple of folks that are planning to share a room. So that number will go up, um, but it starts at 11 and we can go up as high as 22 with uh, RMR. Now, when we open up Nancy Pen, we're planning to open that up in two months later in October. Nancy Pen can hold a little bit more. Um, just having everyone in their own room, it's about 14. And if every room was shared, we can go as high as 24. So that's the range that we're looking at. And we'll adjust those uh, numbers as more and more people tend to share. So keep an eye on it. Um, send an email to the registration at uh, monroeinstitute.org. We'll put you on the waiting list. And if something opens up, um, Tammy will come and reach out to you and, and let you know. And we also have the next class, the next course after this one is, is out of body, OBE spectrum. And Luigi and I are teaching that program. He's, a, he's from England, one of our residential trainers. Lucid dreaming. Yeah, that, that's a fantastic course. I actually took the first one. Um, and, and I should say out of body experiences is, is my passion. So uh, really happy with that course because in that one, Alan and Luigi will teach you multiple techniques. So you can try them out and see which one works for you. Um, we will actually have another Zoom live event like this to talk more about the OBE spectrum, and we'll invite Luigi and Alan, and they can share their experiences, but look forward to that one, because I, I know that's a favorite for a lot of folks, and, and that's a really, really good course, so and that's August love 14. to see you guys there as well. And Michael's asking a lot of good questions. Uh, he says, uh, I don't understand the type of machine taking these photos. It doesn't seem like Curlian. It's not Curlian. Uh, it's actually the computer software that's the magic. Um, we use a digital camera and the software processes it, complex algorithms. Um, and actually now, you, the only issue with video, which is what I like, because you can see changes as they occur, is it eats up a lot of memory. So I have huge hard drives uh, to deal with that, but they can actually, Put this, uh, if you go to uh, www.biofieldviewer, V is in Victor, I E W E R dot com, uh, Dr. Thornton Streeter, who I've been a long time collaborator with, that's his website. And there are a lot of cheaper versions. Um, I just use his because um, it has a lot of a different views and accessories that the others don't have. Uh, and well, a lot of do uh, video. Uh, for instance, a chakra viewer looks at about 18 inches out. And it used to be to do that, we had to hand focus 18 inches out on each chakra. It took two hours to do a full set. Now you just hit a button and it takes them all at once. It's where was this, you know, 25 years ago when we were starting out? So uh, highly recommended. Uh, runs about, I think it's 2,000 pounds. And we had, uh, a don't quote me. we had a participant a couple of years ago, 2019, I think, that actually was so impressed. He bought his own and then he's been doing all these experiments. And he sends us these uh, videos uh, and it's just amazing. We'll be showing some of those in our program. 
because it's a very good demonstration of, of moving energy and shifting energy. And uh, Sylvia wanted to know if the programs include lodging and meals. Yes. Yes. That's, that's <laughs> one of the reasons it's actually a bargain and the food is outstanding. Um, and despite, it's kind of interesting. I, I would eat a lot, but I always usually come a pound or two uh, lighter back considering <laughs> how much I eat. <laughs> it's amazing. And also, the, it's also uh, includes the trip from the airport to the Institute. So it's pretty much you getting there is your extra expense. Yeah, yeah. I like I like to tell people it's a spiritual holiday. I mean, go yeah. and everything's taken care of for you. You can relax. You spend a whole week just dedicating to yourself to do a spiritual journey, and you meet wonderful people. I mean, that's part of why I go there. It's just all these amazing people you learn from and share stories. And I always come back with just an amazing sense of growth and expansion. Uh, so yeah, th this is a great course. And, you know, especially with uh, this course, you might come back a little bit heavier because Brian takes you to this crystal shop. <laughs> and I never had crystals before, but now I have a collection of crystals on my shelf that Brian inspired me to purchase. Uh, so you'll learn a lot about crystals too, which is just fascinating. Yeah. Um, someone else wants to know, uh, you know, they'd like to know some of the science. Uh, we actually, we give a, a very extensive download for you folks. Um, multiple gigabytes, all the PowerPoints, but also scientific papers, um, and things are well documented. Um, and as uh, Dr. Connor, as we get more of these studies done, we're going to have a whole lot more information. So, yeah. All right. Well, we're getting close to that time. So, just want to quickly wrap up. Um, let me first thank my two guests, Alan and Brian. Thank you very much for attending. I really appreciate your, your time. Um, so I'd like you to know that again, we're reopening on August 7th. The first course is the energy medicine course. The next one will be the OBE spectrum. And then about two months later, we'll open up Nancy Penn and we'll have courses in both facilities running at the same time. So you'll see a lot more availability at that point. But we'll uh, also if you can't make it to... I just wanted to say, Stephen, we'll also have courses in August and September at, our, at, at um, Roberts Mountain, too. So we're just yes, mentioning the first two right. up on the schedule. So go to the website. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, please go to the website. I was going to say, we've got all the programs listed there. Um, if you can't make it to the facility, we also have virtual programs as well. And they're, they're trained by the same trainers that you see here. Um, so definitely enjoy that. Now, uh, Brian, I think you had a comment. Oh, uh, well, I was just going to say one of the thing, nice things about energy medicine, there's no prerequisites. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the other courses right. there, there are, but um, you could have no experience whatsoever and you're welcome. Or you can be a Reiki master and you're welcome. Yes, we have a lot of different outside healers and it's great because we all learn from one another. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and the neat thing again, you know, you also have a lot of engineers that come as well because they like to see proof. So yeah. the technology is great to have that proof. Uh, and I'm not sure we highlighted, but I do want to emphasize the training by Alan and Brian will actually certify you as a Reiki master. I have on my wall my Reiki master certificate as well. So that was very cool to get. Yeah. Uh, yes. Right? Uh, <laughs> and we okay. are adding uh, some new anatomy uh, for this one because. Um, the National Certification of Energy Practitioners Committee, uh, Alan Evans actually chairs the National Reiki Committee. Um, so we're adding some, actually it's very few because we already had all the information in our course. Uh, so that for those that would like to pursue certification, uh, which will be new, um, you know, not required, but you have that option available to you. And we'll also talk more about that for those of you who are interested in national certification. It's a, it's a new thing that's been developed and um, we're really excited about it. Wonderful. All right, well, again, thank you everyone. Thank you for all the participants as well to this webinar. We will be saving this and putting it on Facebook and YouTube and so on. So tell your friends, they can certainly come back and review this again. Uh, and finally, thank you to all our donors that have helped us through this interesting times, uh, as well as to fund the reopening. So 
Thank you all and uh, wonderful. I'm looking forward to seeing you on campus one day soon. Same here. <laughs> Three. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye. Ciao.